tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Get it all done. Cleaned up. And that should be it for the year. Year, really. I'm recording. Uh, hi there. <laughs> I'd like to say I'd like to talk about the Orion 130 millimeter space probe reflecting telescope. It is, in my humble opinion, the best thing since this sliced cheese of all of the small, less than 150 millimeter reflectors. This one has everything you want and some things you didn't even know you needed. It has a parabolic mirror instead of the spherical mirror. So when it's focused, it's focused everywhere. Uh, comes with a, a viewfinder. I don't use these, so I'm not sure which one it came. I just stuck this one on here for the review. It's got an all metal focuser. A lot of these cheap things don't have all metal focuses, they have all plastic. And it has a, uh, a screw up here to lock the focuser down. So if you put a heavy camera on it, it won't push the focuser in during the view. A uh, steel body. Uh, an extra nice EQ mount. Can't say it, it's over this side. Um, instead of having the locking knob to lock it down, it's got two of them. They're separated, so it's more secure. 130 millimeter aperture, 650 millimeter focal length, makes it a gives it a focal ratio of five, f five, which is general purpose. So it's kind of good for planets, kind of good for deep space, kind of good for photography, kind of good for general viewing. And it has enough aperture so that you can easily see big craters and small craters and mountains and stuff on the moon. You can see the cloud bands on Jupiter, uh, assuming, of course, you've got good sky. Uh, all of this assumes good sky. I'm in Bortle 6. With a big refinery right over there. I'm telling you what I can see. If you're in dark sky, you can see better than that. But you can see the red spot on Jupiter. You can see the rings on Saturn. You can see Uranus and Neptune. They look like stars, little tiny things. They're too far away. <coughs> uh, you can see uh, the Great Nebula of Orion. It looks like a little purple blot. You can see uh, some of the brighter nebula, like uh, Swan Nebula, Crooked Nebula. Most of the brighter nebula looks like little red, faint red splotches. Because hydrogen alpha glows red, and that's what they're, that's what they're made of. Now you can see Andromeda. It looks like a, a big, kind of overly round, splotchy, flash of light, which is the core of Andromeda. Uh, you can't see Measure 30, you can't see it and triangulum with it. Uh, you can see Boge Galaxy, it looks like a little tiny fuzzy spot. You can see a lot of different star clusters like the uh, M13 and Hercules. They all look like a, a little a little bunch of stars all clumped together. That's what they are. So you get good views out of it. And uh, with small reflectors, you usually can't come to focus with a camera because they're made for a visual. This thing has two spacers in it. So if you can't come to focus, you can take one of the spacers out, stick the camera in, and come to focus. Uh, what I did was, I took the back focuser, the back spacer, this thing here, I, I just unscrewed it and put in a shorter one. So, and so I'm still operating with two spacers, and I can immediately come to focus. In other words, you don't have to have a Barlow lens in this thing to come to focus to take pictures. It takes pretty good pictures. Uh, it, there's a, a real nice right ascension motor drive you can buy for this thing for $120. And uh, it's got a battery pack and you can plug a transformer into it. That's what I do. 12 volt direct current from the house. And it's got a hand controller. You can go real 
fast if you want, or just turn it on and engage the clock line. And it'll dial the star clock guy. When I first got this, I came out here and thought, oh, look at the moon. So I flew over and uh, pointed it at the moon and uh, turned on the clock guide, engaged the clutch, and there were like 30 people here within 15 minutes. That happens when you go out in the front yard with a telescope in a small town. All the neighbors come over. They want to see what you're looking at and talk about uh, aliens and when Jesus is coming back and uh, what's going to happen during the nuclear war. Uh, things of interest to small town folk. And uh, it stayed up there about 30, 40 minutes. So when everybody was done, it was still pointing at the moon. It was tracking pretty well. Uh, let's see. I guess that's all I had to say about it. It's a good telescope. It's got slow motion control. And they're well placed. Uh, it's, it's not wobbly. Now, I'm sitting down. I usually do my duty from the sitting position. These legs extend and it can get real tall. Now, I'm sure if it's real tall, it would be more wobbly. I normally, when I'm using this mount, I normally take a about a seven and a half pound uh, one of these uh, counterweights and set it in the uh, eyepiece drawer. The eyepiece, uh, what do you call it? Eyepiece. The thing you put eyepieces in down here. That helps lower the center of gravity. Anything else about this? No, that's about all, I guess. I think if you buy this, you'll be very happy with it. In fact, of all uh, of all the small ref reflectors I've seen, this is the best one. Ed Ting goes crazy over the 134 millimeter Orion Observer. I'll put a link in the description to his review of that telescope. I've owned both. I used to have that, and a friend of mine who just lived there, in fact, was hot to have a reflector, so I gave my 134 observer to him. But I think this is better because it's got the all-metal focuser and the two spacers, so it's better for photography. And other than that, they're pretty similar. And that's about all I got. So, however, I took some photographs uh, last night of the harvest moon. I had about 30 minutes before the uh, moon came out. So I, I thought, well, I'll take a few pictures to show them this thing can take photographs. Uh, I got three photographs, and then the moon came out, and it's real hard to take photos of deep space objects with the moon out, so I went ahead and took a snapshot of the moon. The other three photographs are, I only got 10 minutes each in them with uh, four second exposures. So it'll do photography, it'll do observation, it's easy to use, easy to assemble, and I like it a lot. And that's about all I got to say, so until we meet again, happy trails.